McFly, her chance to die. No McFly. Chuck season five will be televised. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the cast of Chuck, starting with, you know him as Rain from Earth, Fire, Wind, and Rain. And he can make the ingredients of any Subway sandwich sound oh so delicious. He's Big Mike. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Christopher Lawrence. Ace of Base super fan, ladies and gentlemen, is Jeff Barnes, Scott Krinsky. <laughs> All right, he's got a fat stack burning a hole in his crotch, and he's everyone's favorite Saskatchewan Hindu. It's Lester Patel. He's got some great financing deals if you're interested in a 2011 uh, Toyota Sienna. And his spy name is Six Pack. He's, of course, Captain Awesome, Devin Wood. <laughs> Next up, what's going on there, Case Logic? Dana's daughter at your peril. He's Cora Colonel John Casey, now formerly of the CIA. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Baldwin. She's the giant blonde she-male of Thailand. Ladies and gentlemen, Yvonne Strahovski. He's the magnet, and now he's also known as the intersect. It's Morgan Grimes, Joshua Gomez. You know him as either Chuck Barkowski, as Charles Carmichael, or even as the Schnook. He's the star of Chuck and the king of Comic-Con, Zachary Levi! Mr. Chris Fedak. All right, guys, we're going to leave plenty of time for fan questions, so when we say the magic word, which will be Tangiers, you run to the microphone, and one by one we'll get as many questions in as possible. Uh, let's start off, guys, with uh, obviously things managed to come down to the wire again, but you're able to go out on your own terms with season five. Chris, Zach, everyone, talk about what it's like to be able to go out on your own terms. It's amazing. I mean, in, in network television, there's you don't always get the chance to write your own ending. There's, a, there's, there's. I mean, Alf was captured by the by the bad guys, and we don't know what happened to him because he got canceled. Um, so our show, our show, I'm gonna talk about Alf a lot today. Um, Maybe you could wrap Alf up in season five. Yeah, we'll, we'll wrap. Up. But no, it's, it, it's amazing. It's amazing to write your own, you know, amazing, big ending. And it's like we're we're really excited about it. The writers are really excited, and the cast of the challenge of like closing out this story in a really amazing and spectacular way. It's going to be a lot of fun. And how about for you, Zach? Um, I, I just, uh, you know, I, I think I've talked to some of you guys before about you know it's definitely a mixed bag of feelings, and it's uh, <clears throat> it's a little bittersweet for sure. But I think that uh, there's a huge blessing in that we get to. 
we get one more crack, you know, we get one more, one more uh, season where we all get to hang out and have a lot of fun and bring you guys the best show that, you know, we can make and, and we get to say goodbye to each other and we get to say goodbye to you and, and that's a really rare thing in television these days, so thank you guys so much. Josh, you're you're the intersect now. What's going on? What's holy crap? <laughs> let's, um, let's talk about the the character and sort of uh, where is he going? How does he react to the inter being the intersect? It sounds like he's gonna have a blast. Yeah, I think uh, in true uh, Morgan Grimes fashion, he's uh, it's full steam ahead. Um, I think he's I think unlike unlike Chuck, where he was sort of you know he actually thought things through and. They cared about the welfare of other human beings. Uh, oh, Morgan just wants to, you know, just wants to hurt people. With kung fu and take revenge. Uh, so no, I'm very excited. I'm, 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 I'm scared to death. I, I, I saw the early schedule. I have your schedule. <laughs> it's frightening. It's like, oh my god, I don't have a home life. Uh, so, uh, but uh, no, I'm, I'm, I couldn't be more excited, and uh, I just want to make sure you guys, I hope you guys enjoy it, and just bring some funny goofiness to the, uh, the Intersect project, which is, I think, what it was designed for, uh, originally, was to, was to uh, provide laughter. So, we'll see. <laughs> so far, not so good. <laughs> That's where the writers come in. Uh, so, so what happens with Chuck? I mean, is he okay with not being the Intersect anymore? And can he be a spy without the Chuck Fu? What's what's going on with him this season? <laughs> I wouldn't say he's like totally 100% okay. Like that was the perfect solution for him. I think he um, uh, definitely at the beginning of our season wants the Intersect. You know, he wants those powers. I mean, when you once you have those abilities, it's kind of hard to say goodbye to them, especially when your best friend now has them. But um, this season is very much about the fact that we always, we, this is back to basics for Chuck. You know, we've always enjoyed the fact that for our show, Chuck's solutions, the way he gets out of problems are, are, are how he thinks it through. You know, he figures out the clever solution. And so for this season, we wanted to get back to that. Like, we wanted to say, well, what happens when you take away Superman's cape? You know, what happens then? And then Chuck has to be far greater now. And so it's very much still the Chuck show. It's very much about him coming up with those clever, smart solutions and getting out of trouble and, and you know, always having to be the, 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 the real guy and also be a real spy now, you know, without the superpowers. So Yvonne, you, uh, you got to kick some ass uh, quite a bit, obviously in the Thailand episode, the Phase 3 episode. <laughs> what are you looking forward to doing uh, in this final season? Uh, and and so how, do, how has Sarah evolved now that she's married? Uh, what, what, uh, what, do you, what do you hope for your character? Uh, well, I think first of all I'm looking forward to taking a bit of a, a, a break now that uh, Joshy here is <laughs> going to take up most of the limelight. Um, so, yeah, but I don't know, I hope I get to kick some more ass. I love that Thailand episode. That was one of my favorite things ever to, um, to, to get rain and it was awesome. So, <laughs> but dude, yeah. <laughs> and uh going down the line adam uh we're hearing talk that uh thank you thank you we, we hear colonel casey may uh, get, get a new love interest this season uh, is it time for, uh, for the good colonel to uh find true love what's uh what's going on there to find true <laughs> The talking points here that I've been uh, sort of Adam just broke out. <laughs> the talking <laughs> points. All season five talking points. Just want to make sure I get this Thanks right. Don't look it up. Yeah, don't give any up. What he's not no, I, 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 I perused them earlier and, uh, and I'm just sort of reflecting upon uh, So something about uh, uh, Casey has either met his match or his love match. <laughs> What's her name? Her name is Gertrude Burbansky. Gertrude Burbansky. <laughs> 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 I mean, the, the fun part of this, uh, the fun part of this season is that Chuck is now running his own company. It's you know Carmichael Industries, and so essentially they have, unlike General Beckman getting on the money, <laughs> Carmichael Industries. I approve. <laughs> and and their big competi competition is Verbansky Corporation, which is the best spy, you know, private spy company in the world. And um, uh, so we have a lot of fun this year with um, uh, not only the competition but the uh, 
romantic competition that happens between have the two companies. Have you done the casting yet? We're working on it. Do you have any suggestions as to oh, who yeah. you would like to have that part? Are those casting you? sessions, um, is there uh, room for one more? <laughs> <laughs> how, about, how about Betty White for Gertrude? <laughs> Hashtag Betty White for Gertrude. <laughs> Uh, Chris, I do hear you have some other casting uh, news, though. What, what can you share for uh, the next season? We do. We have, in our first episode coming back, like any Chuck episode, it's, it's jam-packed with stuff, and we have a couple of villains, and I'm very excited that we have, uh, we just cast um, the first villain, and it'll be played by uh, Mark Hamill. Yeah! Is it going to be the CIA, perhaps? What's the CIA is definitely you know this year when you go into private business, the CIA doesn't always you know love that idea. So um, uh, the team will definitely be kind of running afoul of some of the people that they worked for in the past. Um, but we also we have a couple big bad guys and stuff that we don't you know we want we don't want to quite reveal quite yet. But um, uh, it's definitely going to become. I mean, the show is still a spy show, and there's still a big mythology that we're just kind of. It's it's going to we have we're going to change up a lot of the things that we think about the show now. A lot of the things that are the givens. By the end of this year, we'll be changed, and you know we'll, we'll have a new perspective on things. So it's going to be—it's a, it's a, a lot of big reveals. But you are going to find a way to have Beckman come back, and, and yes, so. yeah, Benita is still very much a part of the show, and. Um, uh, yeah. So, Mr. Awesome. Obviously, your character in Ellie uh, that had a big life change with the baby, but also toward the end of the season, you were kind of starting to gravitate back towards Chuck's world. Where, uh, where, where do you see uh, you guys heading, uh, Devin and Ellie, this season? Well, I've had a lot of ideas and notes that I've been giving Fedak during the hiatus, and uh, this is where I see us going, uh, Fedak. Uh, well, first of all, let's talk about the new intersect. I wish we had a montage of pictures of how his hair has morphed from the original Morgan that I knew and loved <laughs> to now his hair is starting to become like Captain Awesome's. <laughs> and it's a little disturbing to me. Besides, not only that, but the fact that we're going to be dealing with a romance for Adam Baldwin. I don't know if there's much room for Awesome in this show anymore between his hair and, uh, and Baldwin here as well. <laughs> it sounds like there is. That wasn't late at all, Ryan. No, I, uh, I, I hope that there's, I mean, with baby Claire, obviously, uh, the stakes are really high, so it would be very selfish for me to get into the spy world without there being an absolute need. And I think our writers do a great job of, when I do get into the spy world, there's that, that need for me to be there, to, to be of some service. So, who knows what it'll be. They don't tell me much, because they know I'll spill all the secrets to you guys. So. <laughs> We should add, by the way, that Sarah Lancaster couldn't make it, but she obviously sends her regrets. Yeah. Uh, apparently, you're killing her off in episode one. She's not, not, not happy. Not happy. I don't think that would be that would go Don't get them in an uproar. They will right. turn on us quick. <laughs> so, um, the Buy More guys, what's going on? <laughs> There's yet another new owner for the Buy More. Where does that put Big Mike? Where does that put Jester? Uh, do you want us to answer in unison? Oh. <laughs> I've said this before, but uh, you could address us individually. And by our actor's name, we're not you, you don't have a complex feel though. that we would like Spy Worlds by World, us, we, us, singing is tough, we. <laughs> I didn't even get a microphone, that's how I respect my <laughs> Or is there some fireworks in the Jepster relationship, maybe? I don't know. Uh, oh. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> I, I, do, I, I just I do. hope, and uh, Chris, maybe you can address this a little bit, that I get um, some scenes this season in the actual show. <laughs> I don't know if, if, if that's if that's where we're going with the character. Without me, he wants to without the <laughs> Good, Chris. You have teased Jeff versus Lester. Can you elaborate on that? Um, 
this is the season where it all falls apart between Jeff and Lester. We are going to see, we're going to see a great war, a war between these two men, and it's going to be very dramatic. And like I said, this is the season where everything changes. So it's like there's a lot of big things coming their way, and um, uh, it's going to be it's going to be very dramatic. The buying war, because like Chuck owns the buying war. So it's like that part of the sh you know it's like when the spy company isn't isn't successful, you know there's only one prop and there's only one part of the business that's actually making a profit. So the buying war is very important. So we have a lot of really exciting things. That Jester's like Sonny and Cher. We cannot <laughs> break them up and break everybody's hearts. Let's just keep them together. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It worked out so well for Sonny and Cher. We really. <laughs> <laughs> we only got two Jetster numbers last season. Are they going to go out with a bang, or what's uh... I think they'll go out with a bang, a very big bang. We'll, de we'll definitely do another Jetster before the end of the year. Woo! Will all the people on this stage live? I don't know. Someone might not survive the season. Someone might not survive the season. And it's going to be big. <laughs> You could say spoiler alert before you do that. <laughs> All right, Tangier, start lining up, people. We're going to get ready for some questions from the audience. Uh, before we do that, though, let's go down the line. I want to hear how everyone wants the show to end, starting with Zach. Awesomely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't. <laughs> One word and answers. I better come up with a good one word and answer. I don't have one. I don't know. Do I really have a say in how the show ends? No. So, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> with the death of Vic. I love you. <laughs> we have to have a set scapegoat and Vic's perfect target. <laughs> well, uh, the most innocent person on the entire set should be the, sca the set scapegoat. Uh, during a show I did before, we had a, a girl named Summer that was a set scapegoat. <laughs> Vic is our Summer. <laughs> I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm still not convinced it, it will end this year. But I speculate on things a lot, so take that for what it's worth. <laughs> I would like a, uh, a feature trilogy, <laughs> much like Lord of the Rings. We feel Spy World Plus, us feel Spy World. Um, at least for Lester, I'll say this, that I do want his character like Willem Dafoe's character at the end of Platoon to go out with a glorious death. Preferably in slow-mo. Um, I think I think there needs to be like a baby Jeffster by the end of the show to carry on the Jeffster legacy. How on earth would that happen? <laughs> not, not, no, not our not our baby. Please always clarify. <laughs> baby anyways. Just stop <laughs> talking now. <laughs> Scott and Lester to block. Big Mike. Um, I, I think I think as as with you know the, the show thus far, I, I think it should end funny. Let's open it up for the audience. We got some questions out there? 
<laughs> Hello, my question is for Adam Baldwin and Josh Gomez. I'm wondering what chance do we have? Oh, that's right. <laughs> Welcome to our world. <laughs> what chance do we have if you know it all ends this season of getting a spin-off kind of odd couple esque with Casey and Morgan? Nice, good-hearted family men. That's it. Yeah, we're just caring <laughs> about everyone else. I think we don't want to even address that divisive question. This we'll, we'll talk back backstage. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is a chunk now. We don't want to talk about the odd couple case. But, but it is, but it is happening. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, it's in the works. <laughs> we all. You guys nice. don't want to be nice. friends, okay? <laughs> on behalf of Zachary Levi fan, or Haley. Oh, nice. And I'm live to casting it now. Uh, nice. Zach, she wanted to know what your favorite memory is from the show. Um, uh, God, that's, that's really tough, because I feel like we've had so many, uh, either making the show or, or uh, all, the, all the things that come with the show, like being able to be here at San Diego Comic Con for <laughs> now this season. Honestly, I, I, I would have to say that. I'd have to say being down here our first year and being so grateful that San Diego Comic Con even invited us down. Because honestly, I was, I, I was, I think Josh and I talked about it. We were like, how do we, how do we squeeze in that? How do we do that? How do we? And uh, but I think the show had enough of a sci-fi sci component that uh, it, it worked and it fit. And, and then obviously, you guys really, you know, you believed in us and you believed in it. And having 2,000 people be at a, a showing of a pilot that that you know, nobody had even heard of really at that point, and, and obviously all 2,000 were Firefly fans, because Adam was there. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I look back on that moment, and I, and honestly, it's it's really kind of uh, amazing, just the emotional roller coaster, and I feel like we're kind of bookending it right now, and I, uh, I was standing right there, and I was watching everybody, you know, watch. Well, it wasn't the same ballroom; it was it was a slightly smaller one. But uh, <laughs> just watching everybody enjoy, we got a standing ovation, and uh, started crying. I was like, "What am I doing? I'm such a sap, but this is awesome." <laughs> so that's probably the best. And hi, Haley, I love you so much, and thank you for all your hard work. Is that uh, oh hug, hug, hugs are free, but, uh, yeah, free, but free high fives all weekend long. <laughs> Next question, please. Um, my question's for Ryan and Chris. Ryan, you came to the UK recently. And we spoke about the development of Captain Awesome's character. How it, you remember? <laughs> it's not quite so awesome as it used to be. Um, and you reacted quite strongly to that and actually picked up your phone and called Chris and left a voicemail. <laughs> was this I, was a, I was a little inebriated. There we go. <laughs> I have to apologize for that uh, three in the morning phone call, uh, Mr. Fedak. Uh, I love my character. Anything you do with it is okay by me. <laughs> recognized your voice because you, you're on my phone. That's amazing. Um, but here's the thing about the thing about Captain Awesome this year, kind of like going back to the basics of the show, is that you know this year, you know Ellie, Ellie knows about Chuck's spy life, so it's much more of a family business. So you know, Awesome and Ellie are definitely going to be a big factor in what happens on the spy side of the story, not just the home life this year. So that's a big deal. Cool. Will we see more of um, uh, Bartowski, Bartowski, by the way? Is that I know. I, so I'm uh, parched. Um, are we going to see Linda Ham Hamilton come back at all? Oh, I'd love to have Linda back on the show. Um, we're, we're currently still 
little break, you know, break in the second half of the season. But um, uh, Linda was great. And she'd be, uh, it, would, it would be great to bring her back. And it wouldn't be the show without Mom Bartowski coming back one more time. Next question. Hi, my question is for the whole cast. I would like to know what your favorite stunt scene was to film. I liked falling off a balcony with Adam into a pool. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, and that was, and actually, that whole sequence was uh, the the first of uh, two Emmys that that Mary Yonka, our stunt coordinator, won for the show, and the only Emmys that we've won. So we were really proud of that. We're really proud of that. <laughs> Mine are two, I have the, the Thailand episode of course was one, and then the, the catwalk fight scene with um, Carolina was, I thought was pretty nice too. <laughs> Mine was uh, when Zach fell off the roof and I caught him uh, one-armed. I mean, that was, <laughs> was a tough one, but we pulled it off. <laughs> that took a few rehearsals. We had little pads down below for rehearsals, but we went without the pads this time. <laughs> Shot it. It's pretty, pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, my uh, Pulp Fiction homage when I stabbed Brendan Ralph in the heart uh, with the needle to revive him. Uh, that, that was pretty awesome. <laughs> Mine was. Oh, you're right. <laughs> I think uh, mine was just one of the many times I passed out. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had three, so I liked them all. Knocking out Patrick, kill Patrick, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and then sliding across the counter. <laughs> we also had that great tackle in the Santa Claus, the Christmas episode. Oh, that was four. I like that one too. <laughs> <laughs> Next question, please. What's up, guys? What's up? It's my first Comic Con that is making it awesome. Nice! Cool. Yeah. Uh, this question is for Yvonne. My friend told me girls find uh, American accents sexy, especially the ones that are from Australia. Is this true for you? And if so, should I move to Australia? <laughs> Did you say that who finds American accents sexy? My friend and I were talking. We were, uh, he told me that Australian girls find American accents sexy. Oh. So, uh, is it? I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the lines for creepy questions are actually there. <laughs> so, answer it. Answer I, you know, that question. Well, you should go to Australia. Why not? Uh, <laughs> give it a shot, I'd say. <laughs> give it a go. <laughs> Alright, next question, please. Right, so my question is for well anyone who can answer it. Is this season going to explain the reason why Chuck's brain is so special? Because it seems other people are getting the intersect pretty easily. And I was just wondering if you're going to explain the science behind it. Um, well, let's put it this way. <laughs> to see 
see uh, Josh's flash face. Have you practiced your flash face? <laughs> Let's see it. No, I can't. I don't want to. That's such a, such a big spoiler. Uh, no, I can't. You can start chanting flash, flash, flash. 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 <laughs> no, I just. went into the, the writer's room and was like, you know, this, oh, one question, do I have to do it exactly like Zach, the, the flash race? Because I've seen some people have a degree of difficulty trying to, I don't know where he came up with it, but it is not, he couldn't just do this. He said, might be, you might see a little. You do it. Side by side! Let's no, not, see me do it enough, you do the flash race. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. Okay, my question is for Scott and Vic. Um, with the impending ending, I'd like to see a greatest hits of Jeff Duck. Uh, <laughs> Uh, DVD, maybe even a world tour. What are the possibilities? Absolutely done. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to your country first. <laughs> <laughs> could, could there ever be a, a spin-off of some sort? Movie? What's, what's sort of the afterlife of Chuck? You know, definitely. I mean, I think that... It would, we always love the idea of like that our show is like no matter what there's always a continuing adventure and i think that that's a great thing is that we've had to build all of our finales in such a way so that we can in theory continue the story but i always like i always i always love the idea that you know the end of the show is really just a prologue for another adventure so um uh, the fact that there could be a casey and morgan you know half hour you know odd couple show is fantastic and that's the great thing about our cast actually is that you know they're so fantastic that there really could be you know, a Captain Awesome television show, and there should be. And that's the, that's the, that's the, great, that's the greatest challenge for us as writers, is actually to still try to put it all into 43 minutes of television when you have such a fantastic cast that you want to write for every week. So it's like, yeah, there's definitely, you know, it's, there's so many different TV shows. It's like Chuck is a fusion of a whole bunch of TV shows all put together, and that's what we love about it. It's also the greatest challenge of it, too. So in other words, we've got to still eat all those Subway sandwiches. Yes, keep eating Subway. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. I just wanted to know how much each of you had input for the development of your characters. <laughs> Very little. Uh, I, I think I think um, I think we all had a, a lot actually. You know, when you do a when you do a pilot episode of any television show, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, you know, it's just, it's, there's only, there were, we only had Chris and Josh, we didn't have a whole uh, room full of writers, it was just these guys, it was their, their, you know, their baby and, and their brainchild, and, uh, and they were with us every day, yeah, the pilot took about a month or so to shoot, I mean, it was a long time, and, uh, and we were with them every day, and we were going over different moments and beats and relationships and things, so they really listened to us, and we really listened to them, and we, you know, you kind of come together and you, you birth these characters, so I, I felt like a lot. Uh, uh, but apparently Vic doesn't feel that way. <laughs> you guys have a great show here. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, in the beginning we had a lot, um, but as the show evolves, like we move so fast, we shoot, like we just get the scripts and we sort of have to work with what we have on the page. And, there's it's also, very fast. There's also a point too where, you know, when you first when you start off as writers, essentially it's you, it's you coming up with the thing. But there comes a point during the pilot process and also the course of five seasons where you you kind of you have to it becomes the actor's character. You know, these guys are essentially not only you know they're building the story each week, and it's it's something that it's very much especially in a television show is like working with the actors. 
to kind of build the rollout. And sometimes we just see what they do. So when we see something that works really well in an episode early in the season, we begin to go after that. We begin to look for opportunities there. And um, uh, that's something that we, it's always a communication back and forth between the cast and the actors. The only problem is, is that this show we do in seven days. So it's a really fast turnaround. That's the amazing thing that we that we're able to do is not only produce it, but also to you know be able to communicate and try to tell story in a in a, in a, in a, in a really fun way. I don't like to toot my own horn um, too often, but I, I will take credit for the appearance of uh, Ronald Reagan in our show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for helping keep him in the show. Thanks. <laughs> it's credit for that. <laughs> Next question. All right, this one's for Chris Spadak. That's my husband. <laughs> we met at Comic Con. She's doing her own panel down there. <laughs> um, I wanted to know in past episodes we see various Comic Con posters and things like that in Chuck's room. Yeah. Are we going to see an episode where Chuck is actually at Comic Con? <laughs> love to do that episode. The trick is, is that we've always, we've actually thought about bringing a camera crew down for the Comic Con to try to grab an episode to do stuff so we could actually get the scope of it. But um, uh, I would love to do a Comic Con episode. I think she wants to be in that episode, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. We have time for one more question. Damn it. Don't worry, this is for you, Adam. <laughs> So typically you pay, play a character who can beat up anybody. I want to know who would win in a fight, Casey or Jane? We are out of time. <laughs> because uh, this is the last opportunity if you guys want to say anything to the crowd about uh, their support over the years. Uh, we love you guys! Yeah. Yeah. This, this is a really amazing place for the Chuck Show. This The show, you know, we made it, but it was really kind of born here. You know, that first screening was an amazing moment for all of us. And it was it's one of those things that we were all sitting in the back of that theater. And usually for TV people, we don't get a chance to watch the show with a, with a whole audience. That's not something that happens all the time. And it was such a magical moment that, you know, the, it was just an amazing moment for all of us. And from the bottom of our hearts, thank you. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for the Subway sandwiches. Thank you for everything. Show and it has been this show will not, would not have been here with for it without you guys. We loved it too. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, you know, I just I just I echo everything Chris has said, and I uh, I've said that I think you know probably. At length uh, in spades before you guys are just so epic. You're so epic. You're so awesome. I Every single one of you. I love you too. Um, every every single one of you. All the time and all the and, and the money that you spend on sandwiches or. or <laughs> No, no, genuinely though, you know, I mean, that, that, that you guys took time out of your day, you took energy out of your lives, you, you've been passionate about what we do, you know, and, and, uh, and, and, and I just, and again, I want to thank uh, San Diego Comic Con for believing in us five years ago and giving us the opportunity to be here to even meet you, to even start that journey with you, and, and uh, so thank you.
the cast and creators of Chuck.